Have you ever looked in a magnification mirror and you saw all this fur on your face or peach fuzz as many of us like to call it? Or have you ever looked at a photograph of yourself where you were standing in the sunlight and you just basically looked like you had a beard all over your face? Or have you ever put on your foundation and your makeup and you just couldn't figure out why it didn't look smooth and why it didn't look glowy. Or have you ever invested in a bunch of brand new skincare that everyone is raving about, but you couldn't figure out why it wasn't doing for your skin what maybe it was doing for someone else's skin. So today I wanted to share with you what happened when I started shaving my face and how shaving my face has completely fixed all of those issues. Before I share what happened to my face when I started shaving it, and also I'm gonna do a little demo and show you how I shave my face, I think it's important to answer that number one question that pretty much everyone always asks me. Aren't you afraid that your hair is gonna grow back thicker and stubbly and darker and you're gonna look like a man's face afterwards? Actually, I used to always be afraid of that, so that's why I never shaved my face. But that doesn't happen. There's different types of hair. So the hair that most of us are probably thinking of is, I think it's called terminal hair. And that's like the hair that a man gets. So for example, my brother, he likes to grow a beard. Well, when his beards don't just stop here, his beards just keep growing and growing and growing because that's a different type of hair on a man's face. On our face, we have, it's called vellus hair, and that's basically peach fuzz that you see. We never grow a, a long beard full of peach fuzz. It grows, you know, just about this long, and it just literally looks like the fuzz on a peach. Now, I'm gonna zoom in here in a few, but it's not really time for me to shave my face, and I typically won't wait that long to wear you know, I look like Chewbacca, so I try to shave about once a week usually. Sometimes every two weeks, it just depends. But I just shaved probably three days ago, so you really won't, you know, see much on my face. But the answer is no, it does not grow back like a man. I never get dark, stubbly hair all over my face. When it grows back, it just grows back like the hair is supposed to. Bella's hair grows back as peach fuzz. It doesn't grow back as dark, stubbly hair. So if that's the one thing that's stopping you from shaving your face, if you're like me, and for years I thought, oh no, I'm not about to you know, have to shave every day like a man because my fear was that the hair would grow back like a man's hair, that doesn't happen if you're shaving off peach fuzz. Now there are some ladies out there who have a, a medical condition called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome or ovarian disease, and that can cause them to grow hair like a man. So if you are someone with PCOS and you already grow hair like a man, not just peach fuzz, but if your body is producing those hormones to make you grow male type hair, then you might not wanna shave or just talk to your doctor first. I know there are some gals that do have PCOS and they do shave their face. I do get, and I mentioned this in a couple videos ago, every now and then I'll, I have like three hairs, maybe four hairs that are not vellus hair. They're like these pokey hairs that I get. And you know, as we age and get closer to menopause, sometimes we just start to get these hairs. So I always tweeze those out and I don't mind shaving. They never, I've had those hairs for a few years. They never grow thicker, they don't grow faster. They're just three hairs and I don't grow a ton more. And a lot of you already confirmed that you get those annoying hairs on your chin. Also, you know, as we get older, we start losing our hair here and get like that little bald spot area. And then we seem to grow hair on our chin. It, it just makes no sense, but those are the joys of aging. So to answer that question, will my peach fuzz grow back as dark, thick, stubbly hair? The answer is no, it does not do that. I will say when I first started shaving my face, a few days after shaving, I would rub it this way and I thought, oh my gosh, it must be growing in thicker. It's it's feeling harder than normal. but. It, it's not growing in thicker. If you, you know, waited two weeks, it would just be the identical peach fuzz that you started with. The reason it's feeling kind of stubbly a few days after you shave is not because it grew in thicker. Think about it, a hair, the way it's formed, it's thinner on the end of the hair. So when we shave it off and that new hair is growing back, it is gonna be more of a, a blunt hair coming in. But give it a week or two, if you didn't shave ever again, it would just grow back to that soft, 
you know, cozy peach fuzz that you initially started with. So now that I've probably answered the two most common questions that I get all of the time, now I will just jump in and share a little bit about what happened when I started shaving my face and why I started shaving my face. In my last video, I shared about my ride or die razors that I use to shave my face. And I use this brand only, Gillette Sensor XL or the Gillette Sensor. I like the disposable ones, um, but they also have some that come, you know, with a, a handle and you can swap out the blades. And there are a ton of other types of products that we can shave our face with. They have the flawless touch or finishing touch. There are like the little uh, blades, the tinkle razors, you know, a lot of women do use those for their eyebrows or their face. There's a ton of different ones and I've tried pretty much everything on the market to shave my face. And to be honest, this is what I love. This is my ride or die all time favorite because I want a super, super close shave. You know, my mom loves that flawless touch or finishing touch because she'll just do it every single day. I don't want to hassle with that every day or every couple of days. I will just shave about once a week or once every two weeks and I get a super close shave the way my husband gets. But again, since this is that vellus hair, the peach fuzz, it's not going to grow back as fast as these three hairs that I have on my chin or that of course that the hair on my husband's face, how fast that grows back. Now also I see a lot of videos where people are shaving their face and then they call it dermaplaning. This is not dermaplaning. I mean, sort of with a razor, a real razor, I am getting the same effects of having your face dermaplaned. I did get my face dermaplaned, I guess about 10 years ago. I, I never get facials. I think I've had one facial in 10 years. When she started doing my face, she said, oh, your skin looks great. Sorry, but this AC in the hotel, it keeps kicking on, so I hope it doesn't get too loud. I even turned it off, and I guess it's, you know, got a mind of its own, and it's just gonna turn on when it feels like it. But, so when she started analyzing my face, she said, well, your skin actually looks really good. Of course, you know, I have my melasma and a few breakouts, but she said, before I can really start doing your skincare and doing your serums and really taking care of your skin, she said, we've got to get rid of all this hair on your face. And of course I laid there thinking, oh no, I can't believe this is happening. But I thought I'm going to trust her because surely she's not going to be dermaplaning my face and then my face is going to grow back like a man. It was probably one of the most amazing things that I ever, ever, ever had done to my face. Now I've never had lasers, I've never had peels. I just don't go to the spa. I do get Botox, but I talk about that all the time. I don't get it for my cosmetic reasons, I get it for migraines. And so three of the injections go here in my forehead and then the rest go all over the back of my head and my neck. I've never had fillers. I just, I'm high maintenance for myself as far as like skincare routines I like to do at home, but I am not high maintenance as far as wanting to go and hassle with having, you know, things done at a spa. So I will say I was pretty nervous, but afterwards, oh my gosh, I could not believe my skin looked that good. It was just, I was just used to always looking in the mirror and, you know, seeing a furry animal <laughs> smiling back at me. And I just never realized how amazing my skin not only would feel, but how my skincare products would penetrate better. Because, you know, think about it. Sometimes it's annoying, because do you ever look at men, or, you know, I look at my husband, and I think, golly, they age so much slower than we do. And my husband almost never wears sunscreen. I have to make him wear it. So he does have some age spots on his face, but his skin, in general, it's firm, it's smooth, and that's because men shave all the time. And when you're shaving, you're not just getting rid of that hair, you're also getting rid of those dead skin cells on the top layer of your face. So basically, men that shave all the time, they're exfoliating their face all the time. And that is one thing that I've noticed, shaving my face is basically like a really amazing exfoliation treatment for my skin. So that is probably the number one thing that I noticed that happened to my skin when I started shaving is just my skincare, it just started working better. And then the other thing of course that I noticed was when I did my makeup, especially my foundation or you know when I used to wear more face powder or if I'd use bare minerals, is something I used to use all the time, it just it never looked like the models did in the magazines. Now, of course, I know many of them are retouched, but I just never liked the way my skin looked afterwards, and I couldn't figure out why. I didn't realize it was because I had all that hair. I'm telling you, when I shave my face, my foundation, oh, it just it goes on so smooth and flawless, and 
when I look in a magnification mirror, it just looks like my skin. It doesn't look like I have that kind of layer of foundation sitting there, or especially if you do use powder, you'll know what I'm talking about, how it just, everything gets trapped in the little hairs and it just looks kind of cakey. So that was another huge thing that I noticed when I started shaving my face. Now, something else that I think is really important, number one is the type of razor or device that we use. If you use like the Flawless Touch or those that just kind of, you know, gently remove that peach fuzz, you're not gonna have like super, super close, close shave, but if that's what you wanna start with, just to kind of get used to what it looks like. Like I said, my mom, she loves that device, and I'll link it down below. I could be calling it wrong, but I'll link it down below so that you know exactly which one I'm talking about. But, and like I said, there's little handheld razors, the tinkle razors, a bunch of different ones, and I've used a ton of them, but the blades on those are just, they're just not as good as a good quality razor. When you see people saying, oh, I dermaplaned my face, I've used really expensive at-home dermaplaners, and just, I just use a razor. It's cheaper, it works better. These at-home dermaplaners, mm, it's fancy, and it's got this slight vibration, and you know, with that little blade, but it's not real dermaplaning, you guys. So if it says it's an at-home dermaplaner, you know, they're like $100, $200. You know, I do like some pricey things, but I've already tried those, and I just don't think that they are worth the money because a good old-fashioned razor, this brand only, is, to me, the best to shave my face. So when I shave my face, I have a specific skincare routine that I do. Number one, I only shave my face at night. I never, ever, ever shave my face during the day. And of course it's daytime right now because since we're in a hotel, I can only film during the day. So let's hope I don't regret later doing this video during the day because I just don't like to put sunscreen and things like that on after I have shaved my face. So for me, I always like to shave my face at night. And then I'm not gonna use like Retin-A or my retinol gel or any acids or anything crazy like that in the skincare routine. On the night that I use a razor and shave my face, I have a very specific skincare routine that I use. Now, I'm sure most of you always see guys lathering up with shaving cream and then they shave. Yes, you can absolutely do that. When I first started, I would of course cleanse my face and then I would put you know, a nice layer of the shaving cream on my face so it's nice and lubricated and so that the razor would glide nice and easily. So if you want to use a shaving cream, use one. But I think you should use one that's fragrance free and also after you rinse the shaving cream off your face, wash your face with your face cleanser because some of those ingredients in shaving creams, you know, you don't want them to cause irritation or sensitivity or clog your pores or whatever. So if you need to use an actual shaving cream, go for it. I don't do that anymore because I just like to use my face cleanser. Now, sometimes I don't recommend that you do this. Sometimes I will shave dry with no products on my face at all. And then I get more of a, like a spa dermaplaning treatment. And then I like to tap the razor on just a black cloth or even on top of like a handheld mirror. And you'll see all of the fuzz, but not just fuzz, you'll see all the little dead skin cells just all over. And there's just, it's kind of gross, but there's something kind of gratifying about that to see like, wow, all that came off my face. But for this video and what I do most of the time, I shave wet with my face wet. So all I'll do in the evening is I will wash my face with whatever face cleanser. Now I shouldn't say whatever. I'm not gonna use like a glycolic acid cleanser or just, I wanna use something gentle. And for me, this is very gentle, but this is also slightly exfoliating, but not in a way that ever burns my skin. But just use whatever your favorite cleanser is. I will list a couple other ones that I really love down below. CeraVe has one of my favorites and Vanna Cream their gentle face cleanser. That one is amazing to shave your face with. I've run out of it, so I can't, I'll, I'll pop it on the screen so you see which one I'm talking about. It's like butter. It's almost like the consistency of a shaving cream when you massage it in. And I like to shave in front of a mirror also. Sometimes I'll just shave in the shower without you know, looking, or in our last house, I did have one of those anti-fog mirrors in the shower, which was absolutely fabulous what we left it there for the new buyers. I'll link that one down below too. I get that on Amazon. It's amazing to shave my face in the shower with the mirror, but I will just do this in the evening in front of the mirror at the sink. So I will just cleanse my face the way I normally do. And it's important to have your face clean first because when you're running that razor, you don't want you know, to push any dirt and bacteria or old leftover sunscreen or makeup into your pores. So I do 
my double cleanse. So I take off my makeup with my DHC deep cleansing oil and then I use my face cleanser. And then after I rinse off my face cleanser, I just add a little more face cleanser, enough to give it a good slip. And I make sure, you know, that I have my face nice and wet. And then I like to always use a brand new disposable razor, or I will use this usually only on my face, not my armpits and my legs and all of that, and then my face. This is only dedicated to my face. So if it's my dedicated razor, and don't use any dirty razor, I, I highly recommend that you use a brand new razor, or I will use this usually up to three times at the most. So after I use it the first time, of course, I'm gonna rinse it in good, warm, soapy water. But then what I like to do to go one step further, I like to spray it with rubbing alcohol, and of course I have the cap on, I'm just demoing what I do. But inside this spray bottle that has such a fine mist, it has rubbing alcohol in it. So that's what I like to keep in here, and I can use it on makeup brushes, my razors, or you know, since we're staying in a hotel, I like to spray light switches, you know, toilet seats, things like that. So when I shave, I'm sure most of us know how to shave anyways. It's the same concept as how, you know, you shave your legs or you shave your armpits. You know, you're not gonna dig in really, really hard. You're just gonna kind of let the razor do the pressure and gently uh, shave on your face. I prefer and I think it's best to shave going down. Now sometimes I will shave up but that's very rare because I think it can get a little more irritated if I do that but if I want a super super close shave I will shave uh, going up but I prefer to do everything in downward strokes and also sideways strokes. And then sometimes, like for example, when I get around my nose, sometimes I will move my nose, like push my nose to the side basically, and then I will just kind of shave in sideways strokes. And then when I get around my eyebrows, right above my eyebrow, I put my finger over top of my eyebrow because we don't want to accidentally shave off the brow. Like it, it's taken us this long to grow these brows, we don't want to shave these off. I will also shave right underneath my neck and then just bring it down slightly. I don't go all the way down, but again, use super light pressure. Now you don't need to keep doing 20 passes over one section because remember, you are slightly exfoliating the dead skin on the top of your face. So you don't wanna keep shaving and shaving and shaving in that same section because then you can cause some irritation and that's a little too much manual exfoliation. So you want to be very, very gentle and just do pretty much one pass, maybe two passes at the most in each section. After I finish shaving, I don't just rinse it off, I will follow up with a second cleanse. And again, not with anything stripping, it needs to be an extremely gentle cleanser for your skin because you're not trying to disrupt that skin barrier and now cause sensitivity and irritation. And for those of you that already have melasma or hyperpigmentation like I do, if you go a little too crazy, you don't wanna trigger that irritation and irritation will lead to that inflammation in our skin, which the inflammation can lead to more hyperpigmentation. So you wanna be extremely, extremely gentle with your razor. Now that I've gently shaved my face and then I washed it gently afterwards, the most important part of my face shaving routine is what's about to happen next. I mean, it's not that hard to figure out how to shave our face or to watch plenty of videos to show how to shave our face as women, but I think what I'm about to share next, and of course this is what works the best for me, what I've learned over the past 10 years of shaving my face. I think some people are dealing with some issues like little razor bumps, or maybe they're getting like little teeny pimples everywhere. If you've ever shaved and you get that, this is probably really important for you to watch what I'm about to share. When I first started, I didn't do a proper routine, and I would get a few of those little kind of like a folliculitis, like a little inflammation in the hair follicles from shaving. So that's why I think it's really important right after you shave to actually wash off with a very gentle cleanser your shaving cream or whatever cleanser you are using, make sure you wash that off afterwards. But now we need to move on to other very important steps. I want to use a very gentle routine, but one that is going to nourish my skin barrier, but also one that is going to prevent those little uh, hair follicles from getting that irritation or any like those little pimple looking things. This bottle looks crazy because I use it to travel and I fill up the full one in here. But this is my Paula's Choice, her 2% BHA liquid. And what a BHA is, is it's a salicylic acid. Now, I know I said don't use acids and really harsh things on our face, but this is one acid I will use on my face immediately after I shave because what it does is it helps to 
exfoliate inside that pore where the hair follicle is. So this isn't something that's necessarily going to peel off the you know outside layers of our skin and cause you know too much exfoliation. Now on some people it might be a little too intense. She does have one that I think is a lower strength than this, but I think most people can use this you know once a week, once every couple weeks, and not have any major issues. But of course, I don't know your skin, so always check with your dermatologist first before you use any products that I like for my skin. But what this will do is it will go inside that pore. This is the one product that I always have to use right after I shave because ever since I started using this right after I shave, I never get those little bumps anymore. So I think that this is such an important step, but again, it might be a little too harsh for some people. So what I like to do, the way I like to use it, especially right after I shave, I will leave my face wet, which of course it's drying now since I started talking. Oh, one thing, I have this little pimple here I wanted to mention. Don't go over pimples with the razor. I pretty much lifted up the razor a little bit right when I got here. It's just a little healing pimple. If the pimple's already inflamed and irritated, you don't wanna to try to you know, shave it off. So I meant to point that out. But what I will do is I will just wet my face again or I'll spray it with some of my Aven Thermal Spring Water. And this is just a super fine mist of just sterilized mineral water in a can. And I will generously spray my face. And I don't dry it, all I do is just dry my eyes so that it's not dripping in my eyes. So now my face is kind of buffered with that good layer of this pure water and then I will just take a smidge of this Polish Choice BHA and it just looks like water and I'll just pour some in my hand so you can see what it looks like and I will just do like a, that's too much so I'll either use my fingers and just lightly rub it on on all these areas where I shaved or you could put it on a cotton pad these are my favorites I get these off of Amazon they're like two by two medical gauze pads so this way you don't waste a bunch of your product but right after I shave I don't necessarily want to rub even if I'm doing it really lightly so I don't usually use these right after I shave because at this point I want everything to be gentle and no rubbing, no tugging, no scrubbing, nothing like that. So I'll just kind of lightly pat this in. And again, it's not stinging, it's not burning, and this will never irritate my face because I've already buffered it you know, with all that water. But this will help prevent any of those hair follicles and the pores from getting clogged and causing any of those little red bumps or those little teeny pimples that sometimes we can get, you know, or like an ingrown hair. It helps, especially for men. It's great for men if they get ingrown hairs, so it can help with that. At this point, I'll go brush my teeth or do whatever, and because I like to give this a good three to five minutes to really penetrate my skin without having anything else uh, interfere. If you like and you don't have sensitive skin at all and you've got the healthiest skin barrier in the world, you could just put on your moisturizer and then, you know, just go to bed afterwards. But when I shave my face, I have a specific skincare routine that I use every single time because this is what I found really, really gives me the best results. So let's just recap. I did a double cleanse first with my oil cleanser to remove my makeup and sunscreen and any dirt and debris. Then I used my gentle face cleanser. Then I kept my face super wet and as sudsy as possible and then I shaved. Then I rinsed that off and then I used my gentle face cleanser again. So that's almost three times of cleansing. That's why you have to do this so, so gentle. And then I sprayed my face with my Aven Thermal Spring Water to just kind of neutralize everything and to calm my skin down. And then I put just a few drops mixed with the water of my Beta Hydroxy to penetrate deep inside the pore, to keep everything cleaned out and to prevent any little ingrown hairs or any little pimples that could try to form. Now that that's completely soaked into my skin, now I want to make sure I'm using products that are really good to help calm my skin and to just get my skin prepared so that it's repairing itself while I'm sleeping so that I wake up the next day with beautiful, glowy, smooth skin. So the next product I use is the Paula's Choice 10% Niacinamide Booster. Now, I do have a few Paula's Choice products in this video and it's not sponsored. I never do sponsored videos, but these are just the products that I really truly use and I've used Polish Choice products for probably 20 years now so that's why it's probably my number one favorite skincare brand. Niacinamide is so good for calming my skin. It's really good for your pores if you have like large stretched out pores, not necessarily from blackheads. The BHA that I just shared, that's great if you have blackheads on your nose, but this is more for like if your pores are just kind of stretched out over time from sun damage or you know they just don't look firm and tight. 
this is really great to repair that pore health. And I literally, it just looks like water. I will just use, I don't know, five, six drops of this. And then I just pat it on my fingers and I just lightly pat it all over my face. So you don't need to use a ton of thick products. You can just use a little bit of each product you know, because these things are concentrated. After I use this niacinamide booster, I always feel like I get such a beautiful glow to my skin and my skin just feels healthier and it's just, everything is kind of calmed down. After I pat in my niacinamide booster, I like to use another product from Paula's Choice. Again, I promise this video is not sponsored and I paid for all of these products, but this is her azelaic acid booster. This one's pretty much empty. I just ordered another one, but it's at my mother-in-law's house, so I have to go there and pick it up. This, this is like ride or die. Actually, the niacinamide and the BHA, those are ride or die products for me also, but this is one product I'm never, ever, ever without, and I'm gonna cut this open because there is one more use in it, <laughs> so I'll use that today. But this is her 10% azelaic acid booster. This is such an amazing product if you have sensitive skin or if you have rosacea, a lot of doctors will prescribe this in a higher strength to patients with rosacea. This is amazing even if you have acne, but I love it especially for hyperpigmentation and melasma. It is really great at calming things down in my skin. Azelaic acid is very difficult to make in a skincare product because a lot of times it's kind of grainy, it just doesn't have a good texture. And let me see if I can squeeze any of this out. This one by Paula's Choice is by far the best azelaic acid that I've ever, ever, ever tried. Ooh, okay, I got a little dot, but that's not enough to show you. But this is just like a really sheer lotion. It's not greasy at all. When I rub it in, it just sinks in. And obviously I need more than this. I will get it out of here once I cut this open. But I just use about, about a pea size is what I like to put. And I will put it all over my face. You can see my hyperpigmentation. Some days it's just darker than others, my melasma. But my skin afterwards, it just not only feels amazing, especially because I just shaved, but it's not irritated because I'm using proper products on it afterwards to repair it and kind of calm things down. But that also will prevent any irritation inside the follicle from, you know, and then I don't wake up the next day with little pimples everywhere. After I put those products on my face, I always like to seal it in with a really good quality face moisturizer. You don't have to use this one. You can use whatever works for you. Just a gentle face moisturizer. But the reason I love this one by Elta MD is because it has a lot of niacinamide in it, which I've already just used, but it also is loaded with ceramides and linoleic acid and really good ingredients that help not only moisturize my skin, but just kind of help calm things down and repair my skin barrier. It kind of comes out, it looks like a nice rich cream, but it's a real lightweight moisturizer. It kind of has like a whipped texture. I love the uh, container that it comes in because it's airless. And then I just put a little bit of this on my face, neck, and my chest. And again, I'm not rubbing hard. Everything I do at this point is just extremely gentle. And that was the skincare routine that I use when I shave my face. I think it is extremely important, not only what product we're using to shave our face, but what product we're using on our face afterwards. Leave a comment down below and let me know, do you shave your face and how long has it been since you've been shaving your face? And again, you know, if you want to keep hair on your face, that's totally up to you. But for me, this is just what has worked best for me. And I just really, really love the way my face looks and feels and the way my makeup and the way my skincare products work when I shave my face. If you did like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, I would love to have you here. So just look down below and tap on that subscribe button. Thanks again, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.